vocabulary. Um, as you can tell, there was already an emphasis on vocab learning, which, you know, of course, it's right there in the name. Um, we like to be um, cognizant of using as many tier two vocabulary terms as we can, regardless of the subject matter that we're covering. So we're going to cover those great tier three subject-based key terms that you all need for teaching social studies, but we're also going to weave in words like analyze or like it's another good tier. Significant, yeah, these, these non-subject-based key terms that are going to help your students improve their writing, improve their level of expression, and just make them more successful in high stakes testing situations in life, etc. So we like to call ourselves educational hip-hop. So what that means is we've got a full library of over 700 hip-hop music videos. Welcome. There are packets at the front and pens for you to take as well and then just settle yourselves at the computer. We just started, so we didn't miss anything too important. Okay. Um, so yes, we, we offer all four subjects, K-12. We do have access to all of this. Um, you're not just limited to social studies or current events or whatever. You have access to ELA, science, which is great since social studies is a great cross-curricular subject area, you may find yourself referencing videos outside of your specific social studies section. Um, in addition to the videos, which are kind of meant to engage your students and really hook them into the material, we have full activities and assessments to help students master the material as well. So we're not just going to stop the videos. We want to make sure that students are spending time grappling with material, for, forming stronger connections, and coming up with their own ideas about it. But we definitely don't want to forget engagement, right? It starts with engagement. We want to make sure that our students are really hooked and excited um, and ready to take in the material. They're going to form a much stronger relationship with material that they already feel genuinely invested in. So that's why the videos are important, and that's why we're really known for these really engaging, fun videos. And the hope is that if we pair that engagement with lots of tier two and tier three vocab instruction that it's going to pay off in terms of your students' literacy levels. Not only in the way that they um, maybe read and write, but also the way that they listen and the way that they speak. And the hope is that those, that tier two approach is really going to pay off in terms of student achievement. So this is a summary of three independent studies that took place in New York, Pennsylvania, and Alabama. And they show a pretty significant increase in student achievement after using vocabulary. So on average, students score about 25% higher on state reading tests after using vocabulary. So it, it pays off in great dividends for you as a teacher and for them as well. So why rap? Those of you that are familiar with us, we pretty much exclusively stick in hip hop. We don't get to any other genres. Um, and there's a few good reasons for that. Anyone want to take a guess as to why? More culture, culturally relevant. Culturally relevant? What do you mean by that? Um, our kids today, well, I know in ours, like in this issue, it's an urban setting, and so more of them are listening to rap and country. Okay, for sure. Um, rhythm. Rhythm. The rhythm and pacing? Okay, that's another good reason, right? What do we call that in poetry when there is a rhythm to the words? What's the word we use? Meter. Oh, what, what's, what's pentameter? What is iambic pentameter? It's a hype of five of two. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, it's five of two. It's a It's other than M? Meter. Meter, yeah. <laughs> oh, you were saying meter earlier? Well, no, I was saying that. It's the iambic pentameter. Yeah, I, I mean that pentameter is an example of meter. Dactylic hexameter is another example of the type of meter. Meter is really the way that we... Um, memorized material the way that we like kept our histories alive before we were a written history culture, right? When we were oral historians, the way we kept track of our stories was through meter. So naturally, rap takes advantage of that. But, you know, other musical genres are popular with our kids, and other musical genres also take advantage of meter. So, any other reason why you think rap might be particularly instructionally sound? Approaching academic material. Maybe the rhyme. Yeah, rhyme has a, is a great mnemonic device, so it's rhythm and rhyme work in tandem to help our students remember material. 
Here's something over here. Energy. Energy. Language. Language. It's focused on language. Well, I guess the nature of it is, is the beat, but the beat is mixed with the wording and the, and the language that you use. Yeah. As opposed to other kinds of music are really about the music, the melody. About the instrumentation right. of the melody. Right. Yeah, you actually hit it right on the front of the head. I was kind of like kind of fishing for it a little bit, but you know. <laughs> All right, thanks. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so there's two reasons why we think rap is almost exclusively well suited for teaching teaching academic content. The first one is just word count, pure word count. Hip hop leaves all other genres in the dust. So if you look at the second highest word count genre, I don't know if you can see it, it's heavy metal. I can think of a few reasons why I wouldn't want to teach with heavy metal in my classroom. Don't know how you feel about it. <laughs> but, um, heavy metal is just one of those genres. It's kind of a niche genre. It's not necessarily wildly popular. Um, but we look at the other genres our kids might be listening to, pop, indie rock, country. There are anywhere, anywhere from a third to half the number of words per song than hip hop. So that's one good reason, right? We can tell really complex stories with hip hop in a way that we can't with other, other genres because we're limited in the words. So complex stories, being able to really tell uh, nuanced, detailed stories, and this is obviously very important in social studies. Another reason why hip hop is really well suited for academic content is vocabulary usage, which you were um, really touching on with the focus on language, right? Hip hop at the end of the day is wordplay. Um, there's a lot of parallels you can make between hip hop and Shakespeare. Um, and because of its emphasis on wordplay, you don't need instrumentation with hip hop. I mean, a lot of hip hop has beats and um, various instruments supporting it, but you could be a rapper and just have your voice in your mind. And that's kind of a beautiful thing, right? And this focus on words means that a very diverse vocabulary pays off for you if you are a hip-hop artist. So if we're looking at Jay-Z, Eminem, Tupac, um, they use almost more than twice the number of words that folks like Garth Brooks, Taylor Swift, Michael Jackson use. And this isn't to denigrate those artists at all. Um, it's just a different type of genre. It's a, it's a different approach to music than other genres might have. We know it's some key ones, it's popular with kids, so why not take advantage of that? Um, it's got rhythm and rhyme, which is a mnemonic device, and it has the language to really support the, the really um, rich uh, academic vocabulary that we're trying to convey to students. 